Hi everyone, this is Eric from The Real Estate Experience and today we are going to discuss on a topic that everyone loves to debate. Is leasehold better or freehold better? I will be sharing with you quite a number of projects for comparison as I realize there are different demographics of purchaser for leasehold and freehold across different regions in Singapore. Let's now take a look at an example of The View and Botanic at Bali. Both are located along the same road at Upper Paya Lebar Road. The view is a freehold development that consists of 50 units, whereas Botanic and Bartley is a 99th leasehold development that consists of 797 units. As for the profit, there is a huge disparity. There are a total of 19 profitable transactions ranging with the highest at only 115,000 and a total of 2 unprofitable transactions at the view. But for Botany and Bartley, there is a total of 149 profitable transactions with the highest at 445,000 and zero unprofitable transactions. From this example, Botany and Bartley, which is a leasehold property, actually makes much more than a freehold property that is located just nearby. Based on this example, the size of the development is much more important in the mass market rather than whether it is a leasehold or freehold. Because over at Botanic at Bartley, it is a 797 units development with high turnover transactions and that's why they are actually making more profits. The next example I'm going to show you is Cashew Heights and May Spring. These two developments are located side by side with Cashew Heights being a 999 years leasehold development with 596 units and May Spring is a 99 years leasehold development with 636 units. But in this example, the triple nine years leasehold actually outperform better and you can see that Cashew Heights has an upward trend for the last two years whereas for May Spring is at a stagnant price trend for the last six years. This shows one very important thing is that the land size of the development is much more important rather than whether is it a freehold or leasehold in the mass market. Let's do another comparison but this time round, let's shift our focus to District 11. We will take an example of Sole at Sinaran and Park Infinite at Winam. Sole at Sinaran is a 99th leasehold development which comprises of 417 units with a land size of 12,469 square meter, whereas for Park Infinite at Winam is a freehold development which comprises of 486 units with a land size of 20,481 square meter. Comparing apple to apple with almost the similar numbers of units, you can see that there are a total of 15 transactions with a profit of over 1 million and 2 transactions with a profit of over 2 million at Park Infinite at Winam. Whereas for Sole at Sinaran, there are a total of only 5 transactions with a profit of over 1 million, which also means there is a vast disparity in terms of the profit that they are taking. And so, from here, you can see that land size do matters in the mass market rather than being a leasehold or freehold. Because in every example, bigger land size do outperform better as compared to those of smaller land size. Therefore, in today's market, what is the most important thing that we need to understand? It is to understand consumers' behaviour in the particular area where you are buying your property at because when there is actually more demand, it pushes up the prices, just like the example I've shown you. In a mass market, buyers are looking for bigger developments with more facilities. So in summary, whether is it a leasehold or freehold, it is not the most important factor, because the most important factor is to understand the supply and demand of that particular location that you are looking for, and also the demographic groups of purchasers who are looking into this location, and this will actually assist you to make more profit in your real estate journey. And that's all for today, and I hope you guys learned something from today's sharing. If you find this video useful, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys soon.